This is a look at GNOME Mobile on post-market OS version 24.06 on a OnePlus 6T. This version doesn't look totally different, but there are a few changes under the hood. So let's get into some of the features. From the quick settings, we can see that there is a dark mode and switching it on and off is quite simple and effective. I'm using the dark mode because it shows better on the camera. There's also a screenshot setting available, which is functioning. We can open files and open the screenshot for viewing. Although it's not very noticeable, it does feel like there are changes in the smoothness of the file browser and the smoothness of the OS overall. Next, let's look at the search function. It's quite quick. Anything you search, it will give you recommendations for something on the phone or to search online. And you can also put in calculations, which will give you the answer quite quickly. Next, looking at the settings, there are some added online accounts and some reorganizations of system settings in GNOME 46. According to the release notes, there have been some updates to the accessibility settings, particularly in the Orca voice screen reader. However, that doesn't seem to be functioning on the mobile version of GNOME. can see that Wi-Fi is working and in previous videos viewers have mentioned that you can use a wired connection via USB. Looking at some of the basic apps we can see the functionality is quite quick and smooth. The clock act now has these quick timers, which makes it very easy to set a timer without having to enter specific details. The calendar app also has some design changes. And here we can add an event. And there's also the possibility of online calendars and weather. The software installer app seems to be a lot smoother than in previous versions. Camera functionality is still not available on the OnePlus 6T.
Maps is apparently updated as well, and here we can see it is functioning quite quickly. By default, location services are switched off, so you do have to turn that on in the permission settings before being able to use the Maps app as a GPS. The terminal app is functional as usual, as you would expect on any GNU slash Linux system. Lastly, there are some possibilities of input methods. If you add a non-English keyboard, you have to move it to the top and then log out and re-log in and this will allow you to use a different on-screen keyboard. However, it's designed mostly for the desktop where you have a hardware keyboard that allows you to swap input methods using hotkeys. At the moment, there's no simple way of switching between these input methods so it's not very usable. Here's a look at changing the screen orientation. And it looks quite nicely laid out in landscape mode. Lastly, I had tested out the call functioning in this version of Postmarket OS. And happily, I can say that both calling in and receiving calls did allow the audio to pass through, so I was able to hear the caller and the caller is able to hear me. So both the voice and audio are working in both directions. However, loudspeaker is still not functional and in-call volume did not seem to be working yet but it should be functional for making calls. So those are some first looks at GNOME 46 on mobile on top of Postmarket OS. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to write that below. Thanks again for watching, and if you enjoyed this and haven't done so already, please subscribe.